<clears throat> oh man, is this the final nail in the coffin for Diddy? We didn't see him Diddy bopping on nobody's videos. We saw his ass Diddy bopping to islands that we ain't never heard of. Barbados, Barbados, whatever the hell the island's name was. We'll discuss that. Bad Boys 4 dropped their trailer. This movie is set to come out June 7th. We'll break it down, take a look at it. And then a sad note for my people over in Baltimore. A bridge collapsed after a cargo vessel hit it. We'll discuss that. And a little bit more, this edition, Black Entertainment News and more. We start right now. I'm up early for the dealers come out. Everybody is outside till the killers come out. You ain't eating, you just act full. I'm in pack full. Dozen funerals in a month. I got that whole. I will give it to niggas in all rap forms. Ignatius out right now on all platforms. <sighs> What's going on, y'all? You're in the building with y'all knowing I love and all feeling all seeing all powerful. Just damn all everything. Sexy as hell host. That's me, Lamont Tyson. Please be sure to subscribe to this channel. Join me on TikTok, Life Gains One. We're actually growing over there. We're about to hit 7,000 subscribers on TikTok. Come join us. Download the podcast. Let's jump into this thing, but let's salute everybody who's joined me today. It is a blessing to have an audience who come and support you pretty much whenever you come online, whether that's the middle of the night, the middle of the day. You all have been steadfast and garnering and showing me that support. And I want you to know I am very appreciative and grateful and always trying to figure out ways to do something to make sure you all know it other than bringing you good content and good guests. Shout out to RC. Shout out to Rashonda. Willie is in the building. Steve's in the building. Damien is in the building. What's up? Kamara is in the building. What's up? Rico is in the building. What's good, big homie? Daylon is in the building. And shout out to everybody else who I didn't get a chance to say your name. I'm grateful, thankful. And we'll talk about being thankful and treating every day as best you can as if there's no tomorrow but planning for the next day. We'll get there when we talk about my folks in Baltimore and that bridge. But first thing, heating up the airways. Diddy, Diddy bopping, Diddy bopping his ass on a jet, getting the hell up out of Dodge. His home in Miami, his home in California got raided, and damn if he ain't let the kids get arrested too. Damn, Diddy. I'm starting to think that all that stuff 50 Cent be saying about you has some merit to it. Let's take a quick look at the news report. A uh, Sean, no Diddy Combs, no Diddying, no bopping just disappearing, getting the hell up out of Dodge. Overnight, heavily armed federal authorities staging coordinated coast-to-coast -coast raids at properties belonging to music mogul Sean Diddy Combs. Homeland Security Investigations team seen descending on his multi-million dollar home in Los Angeles, going room to room and hauling away boxes. Across the country, more investigators swarmed the rapper's property in a wealthy section of Miami, appearing to carry out a laptop. Multiple sources tell NBC News Combs was in Miami during the searches and had several phones seized before he was scheduled to leave for a trip to the Bahamas. The speed at which it appears these raids were conducted suggests that agents were concerned that they needed to secure evidence quickly and prevent anyone from destroying evidence before they got there. The raids, which lasted into the night, carried out on search warrants out of New York connected to an investigation into allegations of sex trafficking, according to a source familiar with the matter. The source also telling NBC News multiple witnesses have been interviewed by prosecutors and investigators in relation to Combs, who is facing an onslaught of civil lawsuits alleging sexual assault, sex trafficking, and the illegal distribution of guns and drugs. Among his accusers, Rodney Little Rod Jones, a music producer who originally filed a lawsuit against Combs in February. Jones alleged that Combs forced him to procure sex workers and pressured him to engage in sex acts with them. Now Jones has amended that civil suit after the raid, adding Oscar-winning actor Cuba Gooding Jr. as a defendant, alleging that Gooding groped Jones while on Combs' yacht. Representatives for Gooding did not immediately respond to requests for comment. Another prominent accuser, former longtime partner and R&B singer Cassie. Cassie for holding me down in the dark times. Love. 
Last November, she accused Combs of physically and sexually abusing her for years. The case was settled a day after the civil suit was filed for an undisclosed amount. Combs' attorney adding that the settlement was in no way an admission of wrongdoing. And since Cassie sued, as we've covered, several others have come forward leveling similar accusations. Combs has vehemently denied all of those. We have reached out to him for comment, but have not heard back. Well, Emily, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Emily. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't miss the Today Show every weekday at 11 a.m. <laughs> Folks, when I'm in pain, I tend to smile and giggle a little bit. This is this is not looking good. Now, if you want to get into the nuts and bolts of what's going on, you'll have to get down with the Life Game Conspiracy crew. They get all the information. I'm talking about the Moochie, um, uh, uh, Monique, Nicole, that crew. They get the one-on-one. -on -one. You have to go check their channels to get the top stories, the top stuff that's going on in there because they get the stuff that I don't even get. So on a surface level, for you guys watching me, it's like this. Diddy has, he's in a heap of trouble. He done made somebody in that little cabal in them circles he run in very upset. Very, very, very upset. And they turning his black ass every which way but loose. That's what they doing. And eventually, I would love for us to find out whom are all the players in whatever this trafficking ring is so we can take them all down. Take the, take all of them down because I still ain't forgot about Jeffrey Epstein and how all these people used to go meet him on his sex island with tra with traffic girls. I mean, Democrats, Republicans, Clinton, Trump, everybody went to that damn island. And the only thing that island was known for was sex trafficking. What the hell are you going over there for? So when you get see all this smoke, you think that there's some fire. And legitimately, not too many people in the past that have worked with Diddy have had a whole lot nice to say about him helping uplift their career. Hardly anybody. Up until this point where we got this music producer saying that Diddy was having him go and chase down prostitutes. Does that not sound like making the band go walk your ass 12 miles to get me some fucking cheesecake? Y'all remember that? Yeah, that was Diddy. Sounds like it. And the fact that they raided this man's two homes, not just for sex trafficking, but also in with the Rico. Somebody want that ass bad. Somebody want that ass bad. And when all this was happening, they was cracking jokes about my man disappearing to some secret island. Take a look at this. So if you guys haven't heard, allegedly, P. Diddy right now is going through a bunch of lawsuits, right? Which include a shoot, human trafficking. Diddy has denied all this. Well, right now, breaking news, the FBI, police, whatever, they're all raiding his house and now people are tracking Diddy's like private jet and check this out. So it says update, Diddy's private jet departed Vans Airport earlier today, now descending to land at a remote airfield in Barbuda. Is that like the Barbuda Triangle? Now, of course, it's not confirmed that Diddy's actually on this private jet, but I mean, pff, it's going to the Barbuda. Or is that the Bermuda Triangle? Whatever, dude. I don't even know what Barbuda is. That's how much Diddy's getting away from all this. I haven't even heard of that. <laughs> Me neither. What the hell is Barbuda? <laughs> like, what? what? <laughs> or could that have just been Diddy sending, a, sending one of his jets um, kind of like smoke screen type situation so he can go somewhere else and retrieve evidence and things he might have locked down somewhere else. Um, I don't know. But y'all let me know what y'all think about that. And of course, the man who trolls the internet and makes a living doing it, 50 Cent, he had a whole lot to say about this shit. And I know 50 probably don't want to be on no picture of Diddy looking like this. <laughs> But anyway, I got you. So Diddy had, I mean, um, 50 had this to say. Shit just got real. Feds in all the cribs. Damn, they got the kids in handcuffs too. Yeah, they did. They had, they had the, the little boys in handcuffs. Then he goes on further to say, nah, it's not Diddy do it. It's Diddy done. They don't come like that unless they got a case. 
Most of the time, that's true, y'all. There haven't been many times where they've come after somebody on some raid, and later on, the people that they raided didn't go to jail. I mean, I think right now, what we got Trump is one person who's survived that type of raid. Um, I can't think of the actor's name who survived a raid too, but he wound up going to court. So it's going to be a matter of time before this stuff hit the fan. And that wasn't the only person talking about Diddy. We got one more screwball that was talking about Diddy. I want I can't wait to hear what y'all got to say about this one. Candace Owen believes Diddy is the fall guy of a sex trafficking ring. They are raiding to hide evidence, not to find it. <laughs> the feds are currently raiding Diddy's house. They already knew what he was up to, but he is going to be the fall guy so they can protect the people at the top of the ring. They are raiding his home to hide evidence, not to find it. The thing with someone like her is we know that she's not dumb, but she placates people who believe in anything. So it's hard to even tell when she's trying to make sense or not. Now, I am of the mindset that these powerful people do get off into these little cabals and groups and know that they are allowed to flex their power, their money, their reach, and get away with it. It's like law is not made for them. And do I think there are other people involved in this shit? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. And I want them all to get taken down. And the thing is, are there other people involved who have more power and clout than Diddy? Most likely. Most likely. Um, you see that Mr. Def Jam done ran to Bali and is over there acting like he crazy and shit and ain't came back. Y'all know who I'm talking about. Um We've seen the issues and the fallouts from the people that surrounded Harvey Weinstein and how some of them got the hell up out of Dodge and relocated to Europe. So do I think there are other powerful people? I think Candace Owens has a point on this one. Yeah, there probably are. But the thing is, are we going to get hammer of justice dropped on them? Because this is supposed to be about helping victims and not about the celebrity of these people that have been able to get away with circumventing the laws and using that power to get away with murder. It's supposed to be about equal justice under the law, um, helping people, um, helping make sure that people have equal justice and not giving a damn what your name is. If you do something wrong and heinous, you need to go down. So hopefully there's if there's more to this than what we're seeing, it's going to come out and people will be forced to serve the time they need to serve because it bothers me to see I'm bothered that oftentimes there seems to be two standards of rules in this country. There's rules for the politicians, there's rules for the rich and wealthy, and then there's the rules for the average old everyday Joe. It's not supposed to be like that. And the only reason it's like that is because we continue to allow it to be like that. So post your comments, let me know what you think on this Diddy Bop situation. When is we gonna see his ass Diddy Bopping again? When are we going to see him back out here trying to reclaim his name? He's going to have to drop some kind of a memorandum, a speech or something. What the hell happened? Because, you know, these documents um, and what's going on, people are reading them online. Lawyers and all that are reading them left and right. So I want to hear from you guys. Let me know what you think. And now we're going to pivot a little bit and talk about what's going on to my people in Baltimore. Chaotic situation. Big ass bridge came down and it's kind of scary when you think about it. Cause at one point in time I was a over the road truck driver and I went across this bridge and I remember that the bridges, uh Oh, hold on. We might have to go back to the Diddy situation. We, we got the hammer in the building. Uh Oh, uh, Moochie, unmute yourself. Hey. Hey. How you feeling? I'm fine. I'm fine. I see what's going on. Yeah, yeah. Well, talk, talk. You you know, you keep your ears to the streets on these Diddy situations. And now um, help my audience understand what's really going on with Diddy, because we know you get all the good juice. Are y'all sure y'all ready for it? Yeah, they ready. 
They really. Well, I ain't even share it to my channel, so I just came on in the like in the um you know spur of the moment. I wasn't even gonna jump on this with you, Lamont, but I'm gonna say it like this. Okay. They doing a date that they're gonna throw our people to the wolves first. Okay. And if you was crazy enough to get into the, the, today culture like that. Mm -hmm. And you say it's on them. Mm. So, so uh, you you do believe there's more people than just Diddy involved in this thing. So I'm not alone in that. Gonna throw our people to the wolves first. Okay. Our, of our complexion. Mm -hmm. And they're going to try to stay protected. I hope um, Diddy does the right thing and, and bring every, if, if they taking them down, he better take everybody down. Here's the thing with Diddy, because Diddy Diddy is down with all them New York people. And you when I say New York people, you know I'm talking about Trump too, right? Yeah. Is do is Diddy the type of cat? Is he built Moochie where he would snitch or he would try to um you know end himself before go to jail? How do you think he's built? I could see him ending himself first. Really? You wow. Wow. Yeah, I, I, I could see that happening. Wow. So, in essence, you could see this being another Epstein situation because he's got all the names just like Epstein had all the names and all the bodies. Mm-hmm. Oh, no. Wow. Mm. I hope not, though. I hope I hope that he I hope he bring out people that we didn't expect. You know who's on the road? You know who left town, too? Who? Who? Um, the the favorite, everybody's favorite couple. They 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 left too. But who knows? It's spring break. They could be going on a vacation with the whole family. Oh. Okay, I'm not gonna put names out there because this is on you. I'm not on my channel, but you know. So when 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 are you gonna go on your channel and and drop? Cause, like I said, this this is the this is the the conspiracy long arm of the Life Gains Network. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so when are you gonna go on your channel so folks can get their popcorn ready to get the real good news? I don't even I, I I don't even know where to start. If I don't even know if I'm gonna cover it because I, I'm I'm looking at it like this. I mm -hmm. feel like this is a a you know it's a unique game. If you're from New York, this is a unique game of the shells. So they 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 playing with us right now. I don't I don't have time for the distraction. Okay, I got I you. I feel you. Distraction and people I, paying attention to the wrong stuff right now. Yeah, because they want us to know. They want us to be looking at that for sure. Mm -hmm. They want us to be looking at that. Mm -hmm. But you got to come to folks like Moochie to peel back the layers. You know what I'm saying? Like, they got to come back to Moochie to peel back the layer. So if you decide to do it, Moochie, make sure you you let your people know if you decide you want to. You want to. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I just feel like, like right now, this is not what we're supposed to be paying attention to right now. Mm -hmm. It's more it's well, you, stuff that's bigger than P Diddy going to jail. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. I, I understand where she's coming from. Y'all post your comments on the hammer. Hammer is actually in the building, dropping the knowledge as she always does. Moochie was some more um, pretty sad situations happened last night. The Francis Scott Key Bridge. Oh. Take a look at this. This is my people in Baltimore, man. Take a look. Following breaking news this morning out of Baltimore, rescue crews are on the scene after a cargo ship rammed into the Francis Scott Key Bridge, causing it to collapse. Yeah, authorities calling this a mass casualty event this morning, the moment all caught on camera. Good Day's Lizette Nunez joins us now with the very latest. Good morning, Lizette. Good morning, Dan and Tashana. This is really shocking video coming from Baltimore. According to the Associated Press, first responders are attempting to rescue at least seven people in the water. This all happened at around 1.30 in the morning in Baltimore live stream of the Francis Scott Key Bridge shows the cargo ship inching closely before it crashes. Thick black smoke is seen before most of the bridge collapses, sending multiple cars into the water. According to the director of the Baltimore Fire Department, one of those vehicles was the size of a tractor trailer. The Maryland Transportation Authority writing on X that all lanes are closed both directions on the Key Bridge. 
Baltimore Mayor Scott Brandon uh, also posting on social media that he has been alerted about the crash and was heading to the scene. Right now, the focus is to rescue as many people as possible. And for some background here, this is a 1.6 mile long bridge. It is an outer crossing of the Baltimore Harbor and it carries a stretch of I-695. Now it's been around since 1977. It is a highly trafficked bridge carrying more than 11 million vehicles a year. The cargo ship was reportedly heading through Baltimore to Sri Lanka. There are no confirmations of injuries or fatalities, but we will continue to watch that closely. Dan and Tashani. All right, Lizette, I'll take it. Thank you. Sri Lanka? Oh. <laughs> Sri Lanka? What? Lord, have mercy. <sighs> Moochie, yeah. I, when I was a truck driver, I drove up and down that bridge at night. And on the East Coast, we've got some tricky bridges, especially if you're truck driving. Then the wind and how it puts the truck, it can be rather, it can be weird at first. You got to get used to it. Um, situations like this just continue to just make me want to tell people treat every day as if it's your last, but always continue to plan for the future. Like do all, like see all the people you love, make sure you let them know you love them. Um, and do things as if you don't know what's going to happen the next day, because them people that was on that bridge, un unless they was looking and you had a nosy child, like my daughter would have been sitting in the back seat saying, "Daddy, look at that! Look at that boat about to hit the bridge." Mm -hmm. And 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 some mamas and daddies would probably, "A oh, girl, go to sleep. You halfway sleepy." Um, and so, people cherish the ones that you love. And if there's someone you love and you haven't made it right with them, get it right because you just never know. And I know y'all are used to me being on this channel full of jokes and I am full of jokes, um, Jones and just having a good time. But I'm having a good time because y'all are like community. Y'all are like family to me. And I want to keep it that way. And in order to do that, we have to talk about how we can make steps to progress each and every day. So having said that, Moochie, what you think about this bridge situation and what are your wishes for the families and everybody involved? My wishes for everybody is to stay close to your loved ones. Stay close to your loved ones and just keep positive thoughts and keep a high vibration on, on, on life. Don't think about none of this negative stuff that's going on where it has you where you're in fear of things. I mm -hmm. had to get a grip on things because you be worried about so much and you worry about so many people. I think everybody needs to stay positive with it. I would agree. Stay as positive. You know, keep your head space together. That's real big, people. Keep your head space. Um, you start losing your head space, it becomes easy for weird, chaotic thoughts to creep into your mind and then take up va take up vacant spaces in your mind. So stay positive. Try to stay around positive people that help uplift you and enlighten you and give you a laugh here and there. And we'll wish those good families uh, all the best because whoever was driving that boat, Boy, your liability insurance is done. It, when I tell you it's done, it's done. And hopefully, you did have good liability insurance. You're going to have to cover that, buddy. That's Keep crazy. Up. Wait, did you see it fall? Yeah, man. Scary, man. Very scary. And, you know, there are a lot of people, Moochie, who have fear of riding on bridges in the first place. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then if you know how old the infrastructure is in America and exactly. how America's is always talking about we need to fix it and we ain't never got no money for it. But next thing I know, we sending Ukraine more money and shit. I know me uh, you falling apart. They, I we, don't understand who this person is asleep behind the wheel. I, I I don't understand. Like you you hearing all of this going on, and they said at one time people saying, Oh, that's not a problem. Yes, it is a problem. It's a problem. Yeah, I don't think Moochie people a lot of people don't realize. When they first did the the highway system back in the sixties, that was it. They haven't they haven't updated that. The only thing they do is patch it. They add to it. They patch it. They haven't revamped it. 
They haven't resurfaced it. They haven't done none of that stuff they need to do to make the thing fortified. That's all we've gotten. And we really need to get this thing up updated. Like we got to do more than just fucking solar battery chargers. We've got to do a whole lot more to get the system in place. And I'm not saying that if you know the system was updated that it would have been able to withstand a boat riding into. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying that maybe it wouldn't have tumbled as bad as it did had a new infrastructure been in place to fortify what was already there. Because when they built these things back in the day, they built them with the idea that sometime a boat or two might hit it. They did build it with that intention. But hell, that was in the 70s. Yeah. I mean, I know linebackers that run faster and hit harder than some of them boats now. So and we need to update some things. Let's get this thing going. And Moochie, we'll get you out of here on a good note. Okay. If 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 that's possible. Shout out to the wonderful audience tuning in over a hundred in the middle of the week on a Tuesday. Grateful to see you all here. Bad Boys 4 is coming, ladies and gentlemen. Bad Boys 4. I got the trailer, but before I see the trailer, I got to ask Moochie this question. Moochie, it comes out um, June 7th, same day as The Crow, by the way. Moochie, are the audiences and fans, fandom, are they ready to see Will Smith back on the big screen? I believe they are. I believe they are. Okay. Are you personally ready to see him back on the big screen? Yeah, why not? They 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 giving other people a chance. Everybody deserves a second chance. I think so too, but I think at the end of the day, people really wasn't all that pissed with him. I mean, they was mad with him, but I think a lot of people felt like it was a manipulation situation going on. And since the slap, he's done some other movies, he's been on some tours, he's said some things, he's tried to be um He's done everything but have a sit down with Chris Rock and say, let's squash it. He's tiptoed around it, just hadn't gotten to it. And right. so I do I do think the audience is about ready for it. And let's see this trailer. Let's see if it's going to live up to the hype. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Moochie. Uh, Moochie, day one for me. I mean, day, day one for me. That looks, that looks good. It looks... I really like them bringing back the um, uh, the girl, the dude that went to the prom that they tried to intimidate from the last one. You remember from Bad he Boys too? He was in the last one when they got married. They yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that they're keeping the same cast. I'm kind of messed up about the wife thing because mm -hmm. you know, they, her, they changed her and she's been acting for years. I can't think of her name right now, but you know, she and she's real good. She's phenomenal. Yeah. She can act, she got her butt off. Um, but like, other than that, like how did you how did you like the tone of the trailer? How did you like the way they going with the, the I like script? The trailer. I'm loving mm -hmm. the script. I'm glad they brought him back because the way they took him out, even if though we even if we get this quick cameo, I like where it's going. So we know that yeah. his stepson, that his son is coming back. Mike yeah. Lowry's son. So we're gonna probably see him. Uh, yeah, I'm into it. I'm there for it. I'm here for it. I want to see the younger crew, how they get down, if they going to get down with this. Because remember, they, they brought a younger crew in. I don't think mm -hmm. Will and, and Will Smith and Martin Lawrence is going to be doing a lot of physical like how they was doing last, you know, in the previous Bad Boy uh, installment. So, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm here for it. It looks like they found a way that they can keep this thing going, like some more episodes, some more um, movies. Uh, where you can kind of maybe have Mike Lowry playing like an advisory type role where mm -hmm. he's not so hands on after this particular mission is done. And I like how they got Cap. We don't know if he's crooked or if he's been, been working with the bad guys the whole time, even though in my heart, I don't think he's never worked with the bad guys. I don't think but so. They, but they did put that doubt in there now. They did yeah. put that doubt in and it worked. So y'all let us know what you th what Come you on, think. Do you think. They're gonna like uh, do like a whole thing where we see them find out that he's really not dirty and why they did what they did to him. I would like to see that. Now this type of this type of movie script 
this is my wheelhouse. Uh, this this action film, that's that's what I write. That's what I do. And they might go that route or they might have something on the back end where there's family members of his we haven't seen that someone has maybe been holding hostage or mm -hmm. coming dear of or is utilizing to squeeze him for his resources. Right. There's going to be there, there could be some way somehow where he's being squeezed for his position as captain that they put in there in the writing. So I'm all about it, man. I'm all about it. It's just a matter of which one of those pieces would have the fans most emotional. Mm -hmm. What would it be? And it might not be a family member because we don't really he we don't get to see much of his family. Right. So his family really is Will and Martin. That's who we would get emotional about. Right. And so and so someone who's trying to get back at Will and Martin using him as the pawn, that could be something that I could see the writers do. So yeah, we we can be in agreement that he's not going to be the person who um he hasn't been working with the mob for all these years. Someone who might want to get back at Will and Martin might be squeezing him because that's basically his family, Will and Martin. Those are, as he said in the trailer, his bad boys. Mm -hmm. Yep. Let's get some comments before we get out of here. And we've got some good ones today. Monique, 69 ways, Johnson. And Mucha, she told us the other day what them 69 ways meant, too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> No, that's shout funny. out to faithful followers sent me a dollar. I appreciate you, homie. Every bit adds up. Very grateful to have you join us. Then we got Steve, who only sends super chat when Moochie come through. He says, Moochie ain't spilling the tea. <laughs> Hashtag we here for it all. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm feeling like mom's the word right now. I just feel mm -hmm. like right now, yo. <laughs> Oh, Demont, you want to go back to, to, to the whole Diddy thing? They coming after all of them now. And this is, this is, I feel like we shouldn't be focused on it because they throwing up, they throwing our people to the wolves first. And, and the other people that's behind them is going to get away with it. And, and, and so, he's like celebrating this, like this is all good, but I, I'm, it's like a bittersweet thing to me because like, it's more people behind this. Yeah, I mean, that's how we all feel. I'm like hoping, I'm hoping he... What I'm hoping is, did he actually, instead of... I hope he doesn't take himself out. I hope he stands tall and tries to right his wrongs, even though he knows he's going to jail. Right, right. I don't know about that one, Moochie. I know. I, it, that's why, that's I, why, like, I, I, I would love for him to do that and, and, and really stand up to the powers that be. But I don't. Diddy pretends like he this great hustler and all that, but you ain't no great hustler till your back is up against the wall, and his back is about to be up against the wall. Has he become so accustomed to the the good life that he ain't gonna want to live in discomfort anymore, and he's gonna come out and throw the Anglo's under the bus that need to be thrown under the bus because there's other names involved surrounding these these cases. There's it, other names the involved. Thing. They might look, look at what we what we was expecting that he might do. And people gonna if, if it happens, they're gonna say he did it because he didn't want to face the truth. Or did they have somebody take him out? Right. Like yeah. I'm 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 looking at all of that. So people's not seeing the big picture with this. Now and make no mistake, we're not saying that we don't want him to get justice. We are. We, but we're also saying we don't want someone to just be scapegoated either. We want everybody who is involved that has been doing these people wrong for so long to all go down. And you oftentimes you see too many of these situations when that temperature get hot, they want to pull out one turtle and say, that's your stew. When no, it was a whole bunch of fucking turtles under exactly. there making things happen. You get, you that's, get that's, it. Yeah, of course. Of course, Mike get it. Mike's very political. Mike understand. Mike been seeing things, but Mike was called crazy back in the day because there wasn't enough evidence of the type of things I was telling y'all was happening 
what's happening. There's evidence nowadays, and yet people still want to tell you, don't believe what you see, believe what I tell you. Nah, mm-hmm. hell, hell no. I got 2020 vision, thank goodness. And coming right back at you, Moochie, Steve hit you with the $2 super chat. He says, we'll slap the man. Why wouldn't I watch his movie? <laughs> A Chris well, Steve, will be an instant classic. Yeah, there are a lot of people. A Steve, lot of people who, mixed up and stuff where they got people. All I'm gonna say is go to Hulu, and it's a show where they talk about that Hollywood fixer, like yeah, like a yeah. real Ray Donovan. Go check mm-hmm. that out. Yeah. Every, go check that out, and you'll find out how many people have done dirty deeds and. Hollywood has covered it up with a real fixer. We thinking Ray Donovan is like a fictional thing. Nah, that is for real. Remember, most art imitates it's life. Life, exactly. And if you can, if if you can believe that political adversaries would have fixers, mm-hmm. why can't you believe that Hollywood folks would have fixers? I mean, anyone who's wealthy and powerful and has the ability to circumvent the law, create law, change law, spit in the face of the law, yeah, they're going to have fixers. They're going to definitely have fixers. So, yeah, definitely. But that um, documentary she's talking about, Steve, on Hulu is fire. Go check it out. Now, here we go to to the sis, Monique, 69 Ways Johnson. She says, I'm looking for, I'm looking for the bad boys movie. I kind of forgot about the slap. Long as he doesn't slap anyone in the movie, all is forgotten. Looks hilarious. <laughs> See, I'm going to tell you what this is, Moochie. Monique 69 Ways Johnson, she's a lover, not a fighter. She's a lover. She, I mean, her, her name exudes love. Until you mess with her food, her money, and probably her kids. But other than that, she is a lover. So, yeah, she's a forgiving soul, Moochie, and she's willing to forgive old Willie Smith. Last but not least, Steve, who really comes out when Moochie gets in here, says $2. I appreciate you, homie. And Monique, I appreciate you for the five. He says, a Chris Rock cameo would be an instant classic. Well, Steve, I can tell you right now, that ain't gonna happen. (laughs) I would love for it to happen, but that's not gonna happen at all. So, Moochie, What's what you got going on on your channel before we get out of here so we can let the people know what how they can see you, what they can expect from you, and what's going on? So I'm kind of laying low this week, but I will get on to do the trailer breakdown for BMF, make some possible predictions. Ladies, we will be doing movie night with the ladies Thursday. EJ will be hosting, and y'all got to check out Kim Kimma. We, that's the movie that we're doing next. Uh... And it's Kiba, I mean. So we're doing mm-hmm. that movie next. So check that out. Movie night with the ladies. And of course, round and round it goes with BMF, the episode. So I'm kind of laying low, only doing one thing this week. All right. Which, which sometimes you need to do, Moochie. You got to take care of yourself. You know what exactly. I mean? Exactly. And don't forget Sunday, y'all. Foxy Brown. It's a movie. It's it's um the old school movie. That's what we're gonna be doing. Y'all need to check out the movie if you want to check it out. It's on Pluto and Tubi for free. Come come rock with us Sunday so we can reminisce and talk about the old black exploitation movies. Right. <laughs> Put your hammers up, y'all. <laughs> well, you like you like my little. Yeah, put 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 them hammers up, y'all. Let let the sisters be heard, man. Check them out. I appreciate y'all coming to check me out again. I think I am officially back. I'm tiptoeing my way back into um, all the YouTubes and all the stuff I've been doing, but so far so good. So I think y'all, I'm here to stay, and I'll be bringing you guys some content this week to BMF uh, movie review. Um, what is it? King Kong versus uh, Godzilla ten. I'm going to be up to that. And then there's some um, trailer breakdowns and things like that I'll be dropping you guys back. So stick with us. Don't forget to like the video, comment, subscribe. Me and Moochie, we out.